Alors, bon matin tout le monde. Good morning, everything, uh, everyone, sorry. <laughs> Elections. Uh, my name is Chris Nardi, reporter for the Journal de Montréal. Moi, c'est Christopher Nardi. Je serai le modérateur aujourd'hui. Alors, uh, in this press conference, we have with us uh, Mr. Michel Roussel, Madame Anne Lawson, and Hugh St. Pierre at the end, who are uh, Deputy Chief Electoral Officers at Elections Canada, as well as Stéphane Perrault, who is Chief Electoral Officer. Uh, nous avons avec nous aujourd'hui Michel Roussel, Anne Lawson, et Hugh St. Pierre, qui sont uh, sous-directeurs des élections uh, chez Elections Canada, ainsi que le Directeur Général des élections, Monsieur Stéphane Perrault. Alors, nous allons commencer avec M. Stéphane Perrault, uh, qui aura quelques propos à vous uh, partager. M. Perrault has a few words to share, and then we will be taking questions in English and in French. Thank you very much. Alors, merci, bonjour. Good morning, and thank you for being here today. With me are Deputy Chief Electoral Law Officers Hugues Saint-Pierre, Anne Lawson, and Michel Roussel. I'm here with key members of my team to talk about, of course, the 43rd general election, uh, more, but more specifically to talk about the services that Canadians, Canadians can expect from Elections Canada and what electors can do to improve their voting experience. As Chief Electoral Officer, my priority is to ensure that we administer an election that is accessible and that Canadians can trust. A key part is making the voter experience as simple and as easy as possible one that, for the vast majority of you, will take only a few minutes of your time, and that will re lead to results that all Canadians have confidence in. Today, I can tell you that over 500 Elections Canada offices have opened their doors across the country in each of the 338 electoral districts. We have been serving voters and candidates since last Wednesday when the election was announced, and those offices will be open to Canadians throughout the entire election period. Federal elections are the largest civic exercise in the country, and there are many ways in which Canadians can get involved. One of those ways is to work at the polls. So if you are a 16-year-old Canadian, go to elections.ca. You can find out more about work opportunities, including rates of pay for various positions on polling day or at any of the four days of advanced polls. Now, a number of changes have been made in this election to better serve voters and candidates, as well as to better support election workers who will be and will, who are and will continue to be serving their fellow Canadians. I'd like to talk briefly about some of those changes. At the last election, we saw a significant increase in the number of electors voting at advance polls. This time, voting hours <coughs> for the four days of advance polls will be extended. Polls on advanced voting days will be open across the country from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. It used to be noon till 8. That was nine, now full days, 9 to 9 from Friday, October the 11th till Monday, October the 14th. <coughs> there will also be more advanced polls, 25% more, and a streamlined process to reduce wait times. Voters can also register and vote by special ballot at any of the more than 500 local Elections Canada offices at any time until Tuesday, October 15th, whether they are in their electoral district or outside of their district. The process to vote by special ballot has been improved to make it simpler and faster for voters. As well, the number of service points, additional service points to vote by special ballot has also gone up, for example, in remote work camp and on post-secondary campuses. More than 100 campus locations will be open across the country from October 5th to October 9th, a significant increase from the service offering in 2015. You do not have to be a student to vote at one of those locations. Anyone can vote there no matter where you live, just like at any Elections Canada office. A new paper ballot design with larger font and other features to make it easier to read was introduced at, uh, by elections earlier this year and will be in use for the general election. Finally, parties and candidates now have access to an online portal to better serve them. For example, if you plan to be a candidate, you can now file your nomination per papers directly online. You do not have to go to the returning officer. And you can file online and obtain a range of information, products, and, and services 24-7 through the portal once you open your account. These are some of the main changes that have been made to improve the experience of voters and candidates. I can also tell you today that we are aiming to have the most complete and accurate National Register of Electors in our history and have already made good progress towards that goal. In fact, we have the most complete and accurate register that we've ever had at this point in the electoral cycle. In the upcoming weeks, Canadians can do their part 
by simply visiting elections.ca to make sure that they are registered or to confirm that their information is up to date. By registering and updating your information, you are making sure that you will get a voter information card, generally known as a VIC, and that will tell you everything that you need to know about when and where to vote. J'aimerais maintenant parler de certaines mesures que nous prenons pour assurer la sécurité de l'élection dans le contexte actuel. La sécurité de l'élection a été et demeure une priorité pour Élection Canada. Alors, au cours des dernières années, on a travaillé avec diligence pour préparer l'élection, en collaboration, bien sûr, avec le commissaire aux élections, mais aussi avec nos partenaires de sécurité du gouvernement du Canada. Et on a pris plusieurs mesures pour atténuer les menaces pour la sécurité, notamment, notamment avec certaines améliorations à nos systèmes de technologie de l'information. Grâce à un niveau sans précédent de planification, de tests et de simulation, je peux dire que nous sommes bien préparés pour assurer que l'élection se déroule en toute sécurité. Il faut également rappeler que nous continuons d'utiliser des bulletins de vote papier qui sont marqués à la main et comptés en présence de témoins. Les bulletins de vote ne seront ni marqués ni comptés de manière électronique, de sorte qu'il n'y a pas de risque que le, les résultats soient piratés. Et notre processus conserve une trace écrite qui permet de valider les résultats et d'effectuer un recomptage au besoin. Bon nombre d'entre vous sont également soucieux d'obtenir des renseignements exacts au sujet de l'élection. Et à cet égard, le rôle d'Élection Canada est très clair, s'assurer que les électeurs ont accès à de l'information exacte sur le vote et sur l'enregistrement. On a lancé une vaste campagne d'information des électeurs et on a mis en place un répertoire de toutes nos communications officielles sur notre site Web. Donc, si vous doutez qu'un message provienne d'Élections Canada, vous pouvez visiter élections.ca pour confirmer si c'est bien le cas. On a également mis sur pied une unité de surveillance des médias sociaux pour détecter toute mésinformation quant à la façon de s'inscrire et de voter. Et on est prêt à intervenir, si nécessaire, en communiquant l'information exacte. Élections Canada demeure en tout temps la source d'informations officielles sur le processus électoral. J'invite donc toute personne qui a des questions ou des préoccupations sur le processus de vote à visiter notre site Web ou à nous téléphoner. J'aimerais terminer avec un message pour tous les Canadiens qui auront le droit de vote le mois prochain. Assurez-vous d'être inscrit. Vous pouvez facilement vérifier ou mettre à jour vos renseignements en ligne à élections.ca en quelques minutes. Ce faisant, vous vous assurez de recevoir d'Élections Canada l'information exacte sur le processus de vote et vous contribuez en même temps à préserver l'intégrité du processus électoral. On a la chance au Canada d'avoir une tradition de démocratie électorale qui fait l'envie du monde entier. Et je vous encourage à profiter de l'élection pour participer et bien sûr pour voter. Alors, je vous remercie et je suis maintenant prêt à répondre aux questions. So, thank you and I'm now Uh, available to answer any questions. Merci beaucoup. So we will now switch to the floor for questions. Uh, I ask one question, one follow-up. Um, just raise your hand, and uh, when you start, just before starting, please name yourself and the media outlet you work for. Uh, je vais commencer avec Manon Cormelli. Vous dites qu'on veut s'assurer de la sécurité de l'élection dans le contexte actuel. Quel est le contexte actuel? Écoutez, on a vu depuis, essentiellement depuis 2016, un peu partout dans le monde, aux États-Unis, au Royaume-Uni, en France, en Allemagne, il y a eu quand même des, des incidents électoraux qu'on ne voyait pas par le passé, des questions qui soulèvent euh, des enjeux de sécurité, d'interférence étrangère. Donc, c'est quelque chose qu'on a évidemment sur notre écran radar et on, on a eu la chance jusqu'à un certain point de pouvoir travailler depuis quelques années et, et se préparer à ce type d'environnement-là. Donc, je pense que les Canadiens peuvent avoir confiance là, dans le niveau de préparation et dans le niveau de collaboration qu'on a eu avec nos partenaires de sécurité pour s'assurer qu'on a l'information et les outils qu'il faut pour livrer une élection, encore une fois, dans laquelle tous, tous peuvent avoir confiance. Vous mentionnez, bon, euh, les, il y a eu des incidents électoraux, ingérence étrangère. Vous avez mentionné dans votre présentation le fait qu'on utilise encore un bulletin papier, ce qui nous met à l'abri, en tout cas, d'une manipulation des résultats. Est-ce que, par contre, vous êtes à l'abri d'une manipulation de la liste électorale, vu que les gens euh, peuvent s'inscrire en ligne? Alors, il n'y a, a personne qui peut prétendre qu'un système informatique est, est, est à l'abri de toute interférence. Je peux dire qu'on a, on a certainement renforcé considérablement nos systèmes. On travaille avec les partenaires de sécurité. On a un, un monitoring de nos systèmes. Et je peux vous dire que euh, je suis tout à fait euh, serein par rapport à la sécurité de notre registre des élections. Tom? Uh, Mr. Pro, uh, Tom Korski with Black Blocks. On the uh, National Register, 
exactly how many names have been stricken to date, how many more will be purged by October 21, and are you guaranteeing a 100% clean voters list October 21? So we've had a chance to uh, clean up the list considerably, so we, we've taken two initiatives. One is removing electors who have been essentially inactive for many years. We would write to those electors, and if they have not <coughs> written back, we, we have uh, removed those electors. Um, that was just under 200,000 electors. Uh, and we have also used IRCC data to verify whether Canadian, uh, whether people who are on the register are indeed Canadian citizens. So we've written to over 100,000. We have received confirmation from several uh, thousands of them that, uh, that uh, they are Canadian citizens. And we have removed uh, approximately 75,000 who did not respond either because they were not citizens or simply have neglect neglected to respond. So I can tell you that we have made some considerable improvements to ensure the, the, the uh, accuracy of the list and to make sure that it is uh, a list of Canadian citizens. Forgive me, just, just to clarify, the 200,000 inactive, that includes dead people? That would include any any data for which there is no administrative signs uh, of, of life. Uh, you had written in an inquiry of ministry when asked if you were going to check on whether uh, ineligible voters had cast ballots in the 2015 election or subsequent by-elections and you told the House, well, it's, we're going to have to open up 64,000 poll bags, we're pretty busy. Are, are you going to make that commitment today to determine whether there were ineligible votes cast that may have had a serious influence in certain ridings in previous elections? My focus today and my commitment today is to make sure that people who cast their ballot in this election are eligible voters. We do have access to data from the RCC. We will be verifying after the election. As I said earlier, we have cleaned up the list. And we, uh, we will be verifying after the election if we have any doubt that someone who voted was not a citizen, the matter will be referred to the Commissioner of Canada Elections, and he is the one who has the authority to make uh, any investigation in that regard. I understand your question is about 2015. As I said earlier, and my answer hasn't changed, my focus is on uh, 29, the 2019 general election. So it sounds like a no. No, it's not a no or a yes. I, I said my focus today is on 2019, and that's where, that's where the agency is focusing its efforts. I have no reason to believe that there were uh, any results that would have been affected uh, by, by non-citizens or irregular votes in the last general election, but my focus today is on the 2019 general election. Uh, <laughs> um, similar to my colleague's uh, question in French, can you uh, give me the confidence level that you have about election security from foreign interference? So there are a number of things that we have done. I think w w one of the things we, that's different this election, we have worked closely with security partners in the Government of Canada, in particular the communication security establishment. And one of the things that we have done is to make improvements to our, the, to our IT infrastructure to make sure it is as secure as it can be, and we have solid partnerships uh, in that regard. We've also done some, some basic training for all of our staff who get near a computer, basically, for all the staff at Elections Canada and everyone in the local offices that have access to a computer. If you look at what happened in other jurisdictions around the globe, uh, many cases of, of uh, interference involve simply clicking on a link on a phishing email. And so, you know, you can invest a lot in your systems, but basic awareness training is very important. So that's one of the uh, things that we have done. Um, and also, as I indicated in my remarks, we are monitoring social media. Our mandate is to make sure Canadians have the correct information on the voting process. And if there is incorrect information, wherever the source, whether it's foreign or domestic, if there is incorrect information, we are positioned to rectify that information. Confidence level of one to ten, where would you be at? I'm, as I, say, I tell my, my colleagues in front, I sleep very well. I think we have a robust electoral process. Uh, it's a paper process. At the end of the day, it's the voters in the ballot, uh, the ballot booth checking a mark, and these are counted by hand. And, and Canadians are aware of, of what's going on around the world, and they're, they're learning to check their sources uh, in terms of the information. And so I'm very confident uh, that we will have a solid election again this year. You, you pick the number. It's very, very, it's very solid. <laughs> the social uh, media monitoring unit. How much um, 
problems do you have maybe in 2015 maybe uh, to understand that better in terms of people being misled to places or uh, sure. given wrong information? I mean, we, we, we had a capacity in place in 2015. It's more robust now. We have more people, more better tools to do that. And of course, people are much more active on social media today than they were in 2015. A lot of the things that we do see and have seen in the past are, you know, they're simply errors or misinformation. It, it's not nefarious uh, necessarily. Our goal is not to distinguish between what may or may not be a mis or disinformation. Our goal is to make sure that the correct information is available to Canadians and to respond pretty quickly. Uh, we do see in this current environment that people are very active on social media and misinformation or incorrect information can travel very quickly. So we have to be able to respond and make sure we, we, we push out the right information. David? Uh, David Thurton, CBC News. Um, so uh, we have a story out um, about Canadian intelligence services being quite concerned about influence from foreign countries, namely uh, India. It's certainly something that I'm aware of. Uh, as I said, we, we have partnerships with intelligence uh, agencies in Canada. Uh, I will not comment on their intelligence or the specific countries. What, what we do know, and, and you've noted in your, in your coverage, is that they are also working with parties, and parties are aware of the situation. And parties have an interest to make sure that they do not have in their, in their ranks candidates that may be infiltrated. So it is a case of the system working, of the intelligence community feeding the, the people who need to know the information that they need uh, to, to deal with these, these attempts to influence. There, there's, there's really nothing for, for me to speak to in terms of foreign interference. Um, you know, the stories of and or information about attempts to penetrate a party are just that. What, what is the effect of that? That's not for me to speculate on. Um, we have one more question. Yeah. And in terms of the impact of millennials on this election, uh, can you speak to that? Can you speak, speak to, you know, we're hearing from the parties that this is like the largest voting block. Is this something that the license candidate is tracking? Is this something that you guys could confirm is you know, going to have a huge influence on this election? Well, certainly one thing that is a preoccupation and a priority for me is making sure that first-time voters are registered. And this is why I, I referenced the importance of going online and checking their, their registration. Uh, we do know that there's a significant gap. If you look at the overall population, upwards of 97% are on the register. If you look at the population age 18 to 34, there's a 30% gap. So these are voters who are not receiving a voter information card to get the same basic information that older voters are getting in terms of where to vote and how to vote. Um, and so that is, that is, uh, has been a priority and we, we have been working to make sure that as much as possible Canadians are on the register and that's why I'm inviting anyone who's listening in today or are reading your stories to go and check online if they are registered and update their information. Oui, euh, ce que je disais simplement, c'est qu'il y a euh, un écart au niveau de l'enregistrement qui est quand même significatif. Euh, quand on regarde la population qui, euh, qui a plus de 34 ans, on parle de au delà de 97 Évidemment, ces chiffres-là évoluent et s'améliorent euh, au moment où on se parle, mais au-delà de 97 sont enregistrés. Donc, on peut parler, toute fin pratique, d'un enregistrement total parce qu'il y a des gens qu'on ne rejoindra jamais. Mais entre les 18 et 34 ans, on est à autour de, ils sont, je, je donne les chiffres de la dernière élection, le 67 Donc, il y a un 30 d'écart et ça, c'est un nombre qui est très important. C'est un, un sur trois qui, si, si ces personnes-là ne sont pas inscrites, ne reçoivent pas la carte d'information de l'électeur qui leur donne l'information de base auquel tous ont accès. Donc, pour nous, pour moi, c'est une priorité de s'assurer que tous les électeurs, quel que soit leur âge, et accès à la même information de base sur euh, le vote, où aller, euh, comment s'identifier, et ainsi de suite. John, on the left. Uh, je parle Blank from the Canadian Press. Um, I want to ask about uh, the third party uh, disclosure and financing. Um, it's something that's happening right now, as we saw before the free bid period, um, significant spending from organizations that we would now consider to be third parties, but were obviously not registered at the time. Uh, could you just comment on how you think the system is working? So far, um, you know, 
Well, I think it's premature for me to draw conclusions. This is one of many areas that we'll be looking at after the election. We, knew, we do see um, you know, third parties registering. There, there, as you know, there are new limits that are pre-writ. Uh, there are new rules that go beyond uh, the traditional rules on election advertising. And so we will see how that works out during the election. We have a lot of information products available for third parties. So if anybody out there is uh, not a party or a candidate but wants to get involved, I do encourage you to get in touch with elections Canada to get the information about those rules and make sure you understand the rules um, if you want to be uh, participating more actively during the election. But after the election uh, is the time where we, we look back and, and see what has worked and what perhaps uh, may require some, some improvements. So yes, for the benefit of, of listeners, so now um, in the past, uh, Canadians abroad, living abroad for more than five years were no longer after five years allowed to vote. The Supreme Court of Canada recognized that all Canadians living abroad have a fundamental right to vote. So this election, no matter how long, if you have lived in Canada, if you've been a resident of Canada, but you're now living abroad, you can vote. Um, it's, of course, difficult to reach out to the global community. So we, in this day and age with social media and our, and our website, we do, do have a, information available. So the best way for Canadians abroad to find out about the process is to contact us through our website and to apply. Um, it's hard to know exactly how many people uh, Canadians are living abroad. The estimates are between one and two million Canadians. We we expect when the when legislation was uh, was passed to to confirm the the rules after the Supreme Court decision, we we expect that the number of voters would have, would go up from 11,000 in the last election to some 30,000. So far, I can say that we're just above 20,000 that have registered. I think if you're looking at the next week or 10 days, it's pretty much the final stretch for most Canadians abroad to register because of the time it takes for them to return their, their ballot, to receive a ballot and return it. Um, so at this point, it seems that the numbers are what we, we thought they would be, but it may, it may of course change. General, yeah. Uh, ballot shortages and whatnot. So this time around, what are you doing to make sure that uh, voting is a uh, more trouble-free, I suppose, for the yes. I think the, the issues in the last elections were, in terms of the ballot, were a symptom of, of, of a larger problem in terms of registration, in terms of making sure that the, that the polls were located in areas that, were, uh, that made sense for the uh, Indigenous communities. So one of the things that we've done, we've been working more closely with Indigenous communities. We've started um, working in particular with uh, 90, uh, 96 communities that were uh, where there are indicators of under-registration or service problems, to engage with them earlier in the electoral cycle. So uh, since last spring, there have been some active engagement to make sure that, they, they, uh, that we understand their needs, that we can improve their registration, and that the voting services are designed to meet their needs and to, and to hire more Indigenous uh, people to work at the polls, and I think which is one of the best ways to serve them. So we'll see what, what results come out of that, but I'm, I'm quite hopeful that we, they will receive better services in this election. Uh, you talk about advanced polling um, for First Nations the best way if, uh, if they do want to vote ahead of time to do so? I think the best way for people living in very remote communities, if you're, you may not be uh, present or able to attend the vote on polling there or advanced polls, is to vote by mail. And I would encourage people to go and apply uh, the sooner the better because of the need for the traveling of the, uh, of the mail uh, back and forth. The, the, uh, the deadline for receiving the, your, your ballot back at Elections Canada is 6 o'clock on October 21st. So in order to get your ballot in the market and, and return it uh, by mail, that is, that is one way. Um, you can vote also at any local office. Now, depending on the geography and where that is, that may, <coughs> may or may not be a, a suitable uh, solution for Indigenous communities or people who are uh, living in more remote areas. Madam? Uh, vous en avez quand même 60 points d'enregistrer jusqu'à présent. 
Mais il y en a juste euh, ici. Il n'y en a pas tous soumis des rapports. Est-ce qu'ils ne sont pas tous tenus dans, dans soumettre un? Euh, Est-ce qu'ils n'étaient pas tous tenus en soumettre un dimanche? Alors, non, il faut qu'il y ait un, atteint un certain seuil, euh, un seuil de 10 000 de dépenses ou de contributions pour avoir à soumettre les, le rapport euh, intérimaire qui était dessus. Ça devrait être plus tard, sinon. Okay. Exact. Est-ce qu'ils est qu doivent, par exemple, s'ils atteignent 10 000 vendredi, est-ce qu'il faut qu'ils soumettent un rapport vendredi ou ils doivent attendre le, le nouvel, la nouvelle échéance qui est un peu plus tard? La prochaine échéance, c'est le… C'est le 15, la prochaine, ça va être après l'élection. Cinq, cinq le, jours avant. Le, cinq jours avant, pardon, effectivement. Cinq ensuite, oui. Puis ensuite, il y, a, il y, a, il y en a un, ah, le dernier qui est après l'élection. Donc, il y, a, il y a plusieurs échéances. Ça va d'une échéance à l'autre. C'est à la prochaine échéance. Oui. So our, our role is, is primarily to inform Canadians of the rules for, for uh, under the Elections Act, including the rules for third parties. The role of the Commissioner of Canada Elections is to investigate any potential case of non-compliance. His investigations may, may emerge from his own uh, uh, witnessing of, of issues. They emerge from complaints made to the Commissioner or from referrals to, uh, to him by Elections Canada. So if we do see um, situations in the environment that appear to be uh, inconsistent with the, uh, with the rules, then we may refer the matter, we would refer the matter to the Commissioner. Uh, it's impossible for Elections Canada to have its eyes on everything that happens uh, on the ground in a country as large as, as Canada. And this is why, in large part, it is a complaints-driven uh, process. During this election, yes. for third parties, yes. I do not comment, comment on any, any particular referrals. Any other questions on the floor? Moi, j'en aurais une à vrai dire. Je suis bien placé pour la poser. Euh, ce matin, mon collègue dans le Journal de Montréal publiait qu'il euh, y avait euh, déjà des plaintes au CRTC. Les conservateurs ont fait une série d'appels automatisés qui euh, enfreignaient la loi et qui ont été euh, arrêtés parce que le parti ne s'identifiait pas au début de ces, euh, ces appels-là et donc venait à l'encontre. C'est un autre problème avec les appels automatisés en élection. Est-ce que c'est devenu un problème courant? Et étiez-vous au courant, justement, de cette campagne-là dans le sud de Montréal? Non, je n'étais pas au courant. Et euh, écoutez, ce sont des choses qui peuvent arriver. Je pense que c'est important que les partis et les candidats travaillent avec le CRTC. C'est le CRTC qui est responsable d'administrer ces, ces règles-là et de communiquer l'information aux candidats et aux partis. On a invité les, les, les gens, les représentants du CRTC, à la réunion euh, de, 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 du, de, du comité aviseur des partis politiques pour qu'ils puissent euh, partager cette information-là. Mais s'il y a des cas de non-conformité, c'est au CRTC là, de recevoir les plaintes et, et d'interagir. Ce n'est pas Élection Canada qui administre cet élément-là du, du régime. Et en général, l'influence, tu sais, dans les cas d'appels automatisés, des robocalls problématiques comme celui-ci, est-ce que c'est un enjeu que vous, soit vous avez déjà remarqué ou que vous entrevoyez pour cette élection? Écoutez, il y a toutes sortes de façons de communiquer maintenant avec les électeurs. On a vu des messages textes, il y a eu des campagnes là-dessus, il, il y a évidemment par les médias sociaux. Euh, notre préoccupation pour nous à Élections Canada, c'est d'abord de s'assurer que l'information soit exacte. Donc, si on a euh, des, des doutes, si on, on, si on voit de l'information qui est inexacte, on va évidemment communiquer euh, avec les électeurs. Mais j'invite les électeurs à confirmer auprès d'Élections Canada l'information qu'ils reçoivent des partis des candidats, pas nécessairement parce que c'est fait de mauvaise foi, mais par erreur, ou des fois un lieu de scrutin change parce qu'il y a eu un bris d'aqueduc ou toutes sortes de circonstances. Et c'est Élections Canada qui a l'information à jour pendant l'élection sur le processus de vote, mais aussi sur les lieux de votation. Donc, quand vous recevez de, de l'information des partis des candidats, prenez le temps de vérifier auprès d'Élections Canada. Il se peut que l'information ait été exacte à un certain moment donné, mais elle ne l'est plus pour toutes sortes de circonstances. Et il, faut, il faut faire attention à ça. Est-ce 
Est-ce que vous avez reçu des exemples où de la mauvaise information a été diffusée dans des appels automatisés ou peut-être autre moyen, mais particulièrement dans les, des robocalls à date? Pas dans cette élection-ci. Je ne suis pas au courant de, de cas là, de, de fausses informations, mais encore là, j'invite à la prudence et, et je ne présume pas de la mauvaise foi de quiconque, mais il y a des erreurs qui se produisent et les électeurs devraient vérifier auprès d'Élections Canada. So they, they are required to vote at their last place of ordinary residence in Canada, and they cannot move around until they have come back to Canada to reside again. If they do come back to Canada, then if they move around, then their new place of residence will be their, their place for, for voting. Uh, but until they are abroad, their last place of ordinary residence is where they cast their ballot. I, I think that that is speculative. We, I mean, we are tracking the numbers. We know where they are being registered, and if there are um, anomalies that appear, we will be following up and, and could refer to the commissioner if necessary. Um, but I, I can't speculate as to what will be the impact. Paul. Oh, sorry, not it's not Paul. <laughs> sorry. Uh, one question on staffing: as many electoral agencies have struggled finding poll workers in the past, I, I just want to ask. How is it going so far for you? Are you confident in, in finding people for every poll and every ride? Well, I, I, as I said at the outset, if, if anybody out there wants to work on polling day, uh, we would welcome them. We, we will be hiring overall close to and perhaps above 300,000 people. That is a very significant workforce. These are people who are available to work either on a Monday or on, on, on the long weekend uh, prior to, to for the advance polls. And so we do need people. We need uh, people from all walks of life. And if you are available and, and want to find out more, go to our website. Uh, this election, the rules have been changed a little bit. We, we are able to begin our recruitment and have begun our recruitment early, so that that is a nice uh, change. In the past, we've had to wait for uh, candidates to uh, refer nominees to us. We no longer have, we welcome nominees, but we do not have to wait for that. So we, we have uh, better ways of recruitment, but I would never say that recruiting 300,000 people is not a challenge. No, I do not have the exact, uh, the exact data. It's gonna start coming in soon. So it started just before uh, the election, September 1st, because of the, uh, uh, the cycle this time around, which was predictable, we were able to open our polls on September 1st, and, and, and returning officers and their staff were able to start actively recruiting uh, at that point. But we've been receiving applications on our website for months now, so in that sense, it's been open for a much longer period of time. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions? Any other questions? Bon, bien, ceci met fin à notre euh, conférence de presse. Merci à tout le monde de s'être déplacé. Thank you very much for having come. And uh, bonne suite des élections. To everyone. <laughs> bon repos. <laughs>